and welcome to Future Cities. I'm Richard Quest, this month reporting from Valencia in Spain. Behind me, the appropriately futuristic surroundings of the City of Arts and Sciences. When it was designed and built at the turn of the century, it was intended to help put Spain's third largest city well and truly on the map. Now Valencia needs to go further if it's going to make its mark. Once a year, Spain's third largest city sits in pole position. On Formula One weekend, half a billion people set their eyes on the street circuit of Valencia for a high-speed spectacle in the sun. Valencia hasn't always been so fortunate. 20 years ago, the world took little notice of this seaside city. The election of Mayor Rita Barbera brought change. She's widely credited with transforming the city. So when you became mayor 20 years ago, what was your number one priority? It was a city that I found apathetic, a city that had its natural beauties, being in the centre of the Spanish Mediterranean, but it needed a little push. The America's Cup provided the desired push. Valencia hosted the world's most prestigious yachting event in 2007. And that put the city and its waters on the map. Having had a racing success, the mayor and her team worked to bring further landmark events to Valencia's marina. A contract was signed with Formula One's Bernie Eccleston. Nine months later, Valencia had its own F1 circuit. Time for a flying lap in James Bond's preferred car, the Aston Martin, before the circuit is closed off for the race. Beautiful car. You're going to drive it? OK. Right. Quality. With top speeds above 300 kilometers an hour and Valencia's landmarks as a backdrop, this race course stands out from other purpose-built tracks. Turning a city into a circuit isn't easy. They won't have all these pesky traffic lights to worry about during the F1. Our main objective is to inconvenience the city as little as possible during the preparations. We do that by only closing two roads in the week leading up to the race. This makes the physical assembly of the circuit all the more challenging. In the two months leading up to the race, 14 grandstands are constructed. Five-ton concrete slabs are installed to mark out the track. 60,000 tyres are brought in from used car lots around Spain to create safety barriers. And five kilometres of track are painted in Valencian colours. Spanish media estimate the annual cost of the race, including the fee to Formula One and assembly of the track, to be around 30 million euros. It's not cheap to make a circuit like this, but uh, if you don't forget that I have explained to you that we have been seeing over 150 countries all over the world. If we consider that the investment is all the big event that Formula One means, I can tell you that it's really very cheap. It's difficult to gauge the value of such publicity. The race's effect on local business is quantifiable. And the critics of the race say its economic impact is underwhelming. I think this race is interesting, but only for a few days. I have uh, had uh, meetings with the uh, leaders of entrepreneurs in the city, the people who have the uh, hotels here, the restaurants, and they say we have had big investments here in the, in the city, but only for a few days. Seen from a wider perspective, F1 is more than just a weekend's worth of business. Formula One is not only a race, it's technology, it's uh, uh, large companies that are behind it, there are sponsors that are behind it, there is corporate business, there is incentive business, there is uh, conventions from the companies. It's not only the race, 
There's a lot of side business that goes throughout the year. Valencia has an event other cities of its size and scale can only dream of hosting. An event the power to inspire even me to get behind the wheel. This is the closest I'll ever get to being a Formula One driver. Racing in miniature. Thankfully, Valencia is more hopeful that its big ventures will continue to pay off long after the chequered flag is waved. If you don't take risks, you won't win, and Valencia is winning. So these big events, these projects, like the America's Cup, like the existing F1, are catalysts of progress, of development, of the future. You can't put a price on that. During the race, F1 cars reach speeds of 300 kilometers an hour, which is the same speed as the new train from here to Madrid. After the break, we take a ride. Valencia may not be Spain's biggest city or its most famous. But if there's one thing this place has over its neighbors, it's kilometers of Golden Beach. This sandy Mediterranean coast is a major tourist attraction and a big contributor to the local economy. Getting more people on the beach is part of Valencia's vision for its future. And the new high-speed rail connection is a crucial part of making this happen. It brings the tourists to Valencia from the landlocked capital, Madrid. Madrid is the capital of the Spanish kingdom a beautiful city that has a fraternal relationship with us. What's the fundamental link? With Madrid, it's the Ave train. Now Madrid has a seaside. It has Valencia's seaside. And us, what have we gained? We've gained an international airport. So, we need to head to Madrid to really test this new train and see how it brings the capital to the coast. While the Spanish capital obviously has huge amounts to offer, it's always lacked easy access to the sea. The high-speed rail link has changed all that, and this is now the quickest way from Madrid to the beach. Connectivity is one of the key factors. To be well connected with the capital of Spain and up, at, up to this point with the rest of the world is very important because it permits us to attract visitors from other continents. To ensure the visitors don't pass Valencia by, the city is making sure it gets maximum exposure inside Madrid's larger station. Valencia certainly isn't shy about getting its message across. All aboard! Next stop, the beach. On board, there are three classes of service. Wherever you sit, the accommodation is at least as good as anything on offer in the air. It's not surprising that with a journey time slashed to 90 minutes, the train has put the plane out of business. Since the opening of the RV between Madrid and Valencia, Airlines have seen their market share on the route drop by 30%. It's got so bad, Ryanair decided to terminate service between the cities altogether. For its passengers, the train fulfills many purposes, from business trips to saucy stag do's. She's getting married. Oh, you're going to a hen party? Yes. So you're going to Valencia for that. Where do you live? Uh, in Madrid. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the train? It's beautiful and it's very comfortable because you are in, a, in Valencia just in one hour and a half. By bringing more visitors to Valencia, the AVE connection has had widespread effects on the businesses here. 
visitors are staying longer. Before the ave came, they live on, on Sunday morning, and right now they're living on Sunday afternoon, late evening. So they're spending the whole day here in the ho at the hotel, eating lunch, so it's increasing our sales. In Valencia's case, faster travel also means faster economic growth. Safety is always first when traveling at such high speeds, as you can see inside the cockpit. If you wanted to stop the train in emergency, how far would the train travel? A 300 por hora, 3 kilometers por una parada de emergencia. Three kilometers? Exacto, three kilometers. Wow. The Ave train between Madrid and Valencia is almost always on time, as I discovered. Barely time for a snack and a newspaper, and we're in Valencia. From the capital to the coast, in 90 minutes. You know what time it is. Time to enjoy the beach. The new line from Madrid to the future city of Valencia is a good example of the train in Spain clearly beating the plane. Valencia's transformation is well underway. It's gone from an industrial city to a tourist resort hosting world-class events in just 10 years. That's no mean feat. Here, they've tasted success and they want more, which is the true sign of a future city. And that's our programme for this month. I'm Richard Quest in Valencia. I'll see you next month in another of the world's future cities.